Over the past few weeks, more and more FaZe Clan members have come out about serious issues within the organization. FaZe Rain and Tico recently posted videos talking about how the company has been taken over by greedy investors who are exploiting the original members and employees. They explain that people are not being compensated for their work and that the original members haven't received a fair number of shares of the company they built. This, among other things, has caused unrest behind the scenes and tensions between FaZe members and the suits are at an all-time high. Rain said that over the years, management has used every trick in the book to get them to fall in line, even going so far as to fabricate stories so they turn against each other. According to him and Tico, this is their area of expertise, corporate politics and trickery, not gaming content. And as a result, they've taken FaZe Clan in a direction that has lost touch with their fan base and left the company on the verge of financial ruin. Yet only nine months ago, FaZe Clan was celebrating their IPO, becoming the first ever publicly traded esports company in history. What's more, they were taking on huge collaborations with global brands brands like Disney and McDonald's and signing on even more well-known celebrities. It was easy to believe all was well and the company was thriving, but the truth is this was far from the case. And now with a stock price that's visible for the world to see, people have begun to realize that FaZe Clan is a sinking ship. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Have you ever been on Netflix, scrolling through the same old movies and TV shows you've seen a hundred times? Or have you typed the name of a movie into the search bar knowing it's on Netflix, but it doesn't show up? I know I have, and it's because Netflix and other streaming websites geo-block a lot of their content. But with Surfshark, that will be a problem of the past. Surfshark is a VPN that allows you to browse the internet from anywhere in the world. With the click of a button, you could transport your digital connection to a cafe in France, a beach in Australia, or a restaurant in the US. This means all you have to do is change your location with Surfshark's VPN and just like that you'll gain access to dozens of movies and TV shows you wouldn't be able to watch otherwise. Not only that but if you use Surfshark all your data will be protected with a powerful encryption so if you're on a public network or you simply don't want to take chances with your personal information you'll have absolutely nothing to worry about. There's literally no risk in trying Surfshark because they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee and by using the code tell us more through the link in the description of this video, Surfshark will give you an 83% discount and three months extra for free. If you ask me, that's a no-brainer. Now back to FaZe Clan. After a year and a half of not posting a video on his channel, FaZe Rain released a video on December 10th, 2022, titled Exposing FaZe Clan. In it, he spoke of how the higher-ups have been exploiting FaZe members and pushing the brand further and further away from what it used to be. I don't want these people to come in and ruin the brand that I sacrificed my childhood for. You don't need these fucking old people to dictate what the fuck you do and take advantage of you just for money, man. You don't. And I've always hated it. I've always been against it. I don't want other people's money. I don't want investors. I don't want none of that shit. He seemed genuinely upset upset and frustrated. And while he didn't go into too much detail at this point, he made it very clear this wouldn't be the last time he'd speak about this. There's just so much that I want to tell y'all, man. There's so much and I will go into detail for I'm going to break it the fuck down. About two months later in February 2023, Rain appeared on Bradley Martin's podcast where he spoke about everything going wrong at FaZe. He explained the heart of the problem is the poor decisions being made by the corporate side of the organization. In trying to grow the company, they prioritized brand collaborations and celebrity endorsements all while neglecting the very thing that got FaZe to where it is in the first place, their people. According to Rain, he never received a salary from FaZe and it took them over six years to pay him back for a pricey investment he made into FaZe's Counter-Strike team. I never took a salary ever, ever, ever. Never took a salary because I'm like, I want FaZe to have the money. I uh, lent FaZe $300,000 to buy our Counter-Strike team at the time, gave that to the Counter-Strike team and then they kind of like said, fuck you for like six years, bro. And my head was like, I'll take care of this brand now so they got me later. What is there was no God in me later. But even though Rain got screwed over, he's in a better position than most. In the early days, Rain, Banks, Temper, and Apex split the shares of FaZe four ways. As more and more suits came in, their stake in the company reduced to a fraction of what it was. But compared to other members of the group, they've got it good. Someone else can come in as late as last year who's not from this industry, never lifted a finger for FaZe, probably didn't even know what FaZe was, and get three times the amount of shares that I have, and a monthly or annually salary that's more money that I've ever been paid from face by a mongful. A lot of them, like we have a glorified middleman who got more shares than like Alex and Rug combined. Like why? How do you come into the company 
and be a glorified middleman. All he does is pass information for Lee and he gets more shares than Alex and Rug. How? The Lee Rain is referring to is Lee Trink, the current CEO of FaZe. Lee is your typical smooth talking corporate executive. He used to be the president of Capitol Records and had a long career in the music industry before joining FaZe Clan as an advisor in 2016. Two years later, he became CEO. And since that point, FaZe started to look a lot more like what it is today. Brand collaborations took center stage with a massive clothing deal with Champion going through shortly after he was appointed and celebrity partnerships became a priority with the likes of Lil Yachty and Offset joining FaZe Clan. Trink was clearly focused on publicity which was great for appearances but he made the crucial mistake of not taking care of the FaZe team. Twice I did a champion collab photo shoot and I have to go out at 7 in the morning to get pictures for the shoot the same day. For free, by the way, while you sell the drop for millions and millions and millions of dollars. You can't even pay me a little bit for the fucking photo shoots. It's just all this like where I always feel like I just owe you something. I just owe you something because it's such a fucking privilege to be in phase, right? No, and that's true. That's what happens. It's like they get used to like promote the merch and it's not like any of us get the money from it. Oh, where's the Batman shit? Does it here? You think I made a fucking dollar off being on the Batman cover? You think I made a single anything off anything I've been advertised as in phase? Nothing. And that's what you got to realize. They use us. They're just like puppets and they make the money from it. And that's just the realistic aspect to pay for more incompetent employees. We're going to go do more incompetent things. It seems the management at phase just don't have their priorities in order. And one of the clearest examples of this was something that happened in March 2022 when phase signed their biggest celebrity to date, Snoop Dogg. He phased the God, it was reported that Snoop would co-create content, participate in business initiatives, and launch merchandise with FaZe Clan for the foreseeable future. In return, he received $1.9 million worth of shares and was promised a seat on FaZe's board of directors once the company went public. And as if that wasn't enough, $248,000 worth of shares were allocated to two of his sons and companies controlled by his wife and manager. Yet since signing, Snoop has hardly appeared in any FaZe Clan content at all. Why is Snoop Dogg on the board of directors, but I don't see a single one of the original members on here. The average age of this board of directors is like 50. What the fuck do these guys know about how to run an esports org? Well, I think we know the answer based off the stock price. They know jack fucking shit. It's true. The company is now run by old, out of touch business people who are disconnected from the young audience that follow and support FaZe. And what's tough to see are the FaZe members who spent years of their lives building this brand, realizing things will never go back to how they were. Yeah, it's really sad to see what's happened over the last few years. The corporation side of FaZe is what has grown it's like a huge monster inside of the brand that is just hungry nasty disgusting like i don't even know what words to put into like the the corporation side of it it's soulless they think that if they collab with champion again or go and say hey look we got disney or you know we got snoop dogg in the house man that it's just gonna fill the hole no, bro. Following the videos from Kay, Tico, and Rain, the FaZe Clan made an official Twitter post addressing the situation. They said, We know that for too long we haven't been the phase we need to be, but we're working hard toward fixing that. We hope to have all the OGs sit down together soon, and we don't want to do that without everyone. We'll do everything in our power to work this out and not let you down. Having visited the phase warehouse some months prior, Mr. Beast responded to the tweet saying, They should be the people in charge. When I visited, not a single person I met had any idea how to make a good piece of content. But the funny thing is, they were in charge. It feels like a distant memory, but FaZe Clan started off as a bunch of friends who made a name for themselves on Call of Duty. They weren't necessarily the most talented or dominant players, but they rose to popularity through their impressive trickshotting ability. Quickscoping and trickshots weren't anything new at the time, but FaZe made it their own by incorporating 360s, no scopes, weapon switching, and more. And with multiple members all doing this and uploading their clips to YouTube, they quickly built a reputation in the gaming community. As the views rolled in and their team grew, they eventually got a shared home in New York in 2014. Here, they continued to grow the brand through esports competitions and YouTube, but they also branched out into lifestyle content. Their viewers got to know them on a more personal level, so not only did they have a massive following, they had a loyal one. But with all the success and accolades came a big realization. They knew a lot about gaming and hardly anything about business. And with how big FaZe had gotten, Temper, Banks & Co made the decision to look for outside help to organize the business. Little did they know, this would mark the beginning of the end for FaZe as they knew it.
In 2015, Tempo got flown out to Norway to meet Norwegian entrepreneur Sebastian Gertz. Sebastian wooed Temper by convincing him of all the doors he'd open if he invested in FaZe, and Temper completely bought into it. This led to Sebastian investing in FaZe through his social media platform Hubrick, which still has a stake in FaZe today. He doesn't mention Sebastian by name, but this may be who Rain is referring to when speaking about the old CEO who ruined things at FaZe. So someone brings in uh, like a money guy. He wasn't even a money guy, he was a finesse guy who told him, oh, I know guys from here, here. I can help you guys do his structure, this, that. But he's just a pathological liar who, like, I genuinely believe has, like, a real mental illness. Like, he really can't stop lying, bro. He actually turned us against each other. Like, he'd come to me. Banks said this about you. Go to Banks. Norton said this about you. Like, he literally told me things like, don't ever tell Banks I told you this, but he said this about you. Realistically, he made that shit up. Back then, it was, like, easier to gain our trust. So what It didn't really take much. If you had any sort of business structure, like, bro, we were idiot kids, bro. We didn't know how shit worked. I just knew how to fucking... Sony Vegas and upload dog. Like I wasn't focused on all that. I wasn't really focused on how this works. None of them were. They were young and inexperienced and their decisions came back to bite them. Rain went as far as saying that the years the old CEO was involved were even worse than what's going on today. Apparently at one stage, after seeing how badly things were going, Rain tried to rally the FaZe members against management. He attempted to form a union amongst FaZe members so they could put their foot down and get allocated the shares they deserved. Rain and the other founders had a meeting with Corey Corporate, where they agreed that whatever the founders say goes but once again their lack of experience got the better of them we had a meeting with like the top executive people and at the founders and we agreed on anything the founders say goes did you put it in writing it was in a meeting it wasn't necessarily in a, in a wasn't necessarily in writing so immediately what they did was they reached out to people like alex and rug and try to negotiate new deals with them, which was at a way lesser like amount than they would have got if they just stood strong and took what we could have got them. That's where it gets up is when people within like a union, a team start folding. The main difference between that time and now is that then everything was happening behind closed doors so no one knew about it. Whereas now, everything is out in the open. In the present day, many OG FaZe members are hardly posting content to YouTube anymore and their main channel is getting a sliver of the views it used to get in the past. Recent reports have also shown that their finances are in disarray as they lost a total of $53 million in 2022. As of April 2023, the company's stock price is under 50 cents, which puts it at risk of being delisted from the Nasdaq. The rules are that any company that fails to close above $1 for 30 consecutive days is issued a deficiency notice, which can trigger a delisting. And the last time FaZe Clan stock was above $1 was on February 7th, 2023. This means they've already been issued their notice. If they can't get their stock price above $1 for 10 consecutive days within the next six months, it's bye-bye FaZe Clan. Hey, I just wanted to say thank you all for joining us here today at the funeral service for FaZe Clan. They had a great run, one of the big biggest orgs in all of esports, gaming in general really, and now they're buried six feet under. It's honestly heartbreaking, like it, it is rough. It seems completely miserable and just this sinking ship, this festering wound that continues to ooze pus. And that's definitely the way Snoop Dogg sees it because on March 29th, 2023, he resigned from FaZe's board of directors. Apparently his resignation wasn't the result of any disagreements with the company, so it must just come down to FaZe's plummeting stock price. Although this just looks like more bad news for FaZe, in truth, Snoop's resignation is probably a good thing. My take is this is actually good for FaZe. Snoop was way overpaid for what he offered back to FaZe clan and celebrity figures offer so little back for orgs right now. I imagine most of you didn't even know Snoop Dogg was part of FaZe Clan because they made this big hoopla one time when he signed up, but he couldn't even be bothered to show up to the announcement in person, so instead all they've ever done together is have a picture of Snoop Dogg holding the FaZe Clan chain. That's really about it. That's about where his involvement in FaZe stops. He took one picture with their chain, and that's it. He said, all right, my job's done here. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the shares and the, the payday, I guess. Glad to be here. And he just kind of rode that for over a year. Snoop's exit came shortly after reports that FaZe laid off 20% of its employees in a bid to stay afloat. This is a trend we're seeing across the esports industry as brands are struggling to cope with the recession. But the reality is that esports as a whole just isn't profitable. And this fact is becoming difficult to ignore for investors and brands. To be honest, like we could lose all of our esports teams. Fine, we just go buy another one like every other org does. Who cares? What you have to preserve is like the content creation team, yes. that side of the brand, because that's what gives the rest of the esports 
esports team's strength. Thin I don't want to blow that, and these motherfuckers are stupid as hell, and they're saturating that shit, selling that shit out, and focusing on like that end, the esports end, which isn't even profitable. So it's like, what are you doing? All of this makes you wonder how FaZe Clan would have turned out if they took a different path. A group like the Sidemen started at a similar time, yet they're bigger and more profitable than ever. And there's no reason FaZe Clan couldn't have been in that position as well. The difference is they focused on the wrong things. They invested in a corporate structure which stifled their creativity and created more problems than it solved. They invested in esports which was ultimately a drain on their finances and they invested in celebrities who provided little to no return. Had they instead continued to focus their efforts on YouTube like they did in the early days, things may have turned out differently. They still could have built out their brand like the Sidemen have but without the pressure and complications that come with a corporate structure. But of course, it's easy saying all of this in hindsight knowing how things would turn out. I guess more than anything, it's sad to see one of gaming's most beloved and respected brands slowly circle the drain. Perhaps there's some way back from this, but at present, things don't look very hopeful. And one thing's for sure, whether FaZe Clan recovers from this or not, it will never again be what it once was.